Hi friends, I'm Liz. I'm Robbie. Welcome back to our channel, Bookworm Couple. Today we are going to be talking about the final installment in the Blood, uh, nope, in the Heroes of Olympus series. <laughs> there it is. I, little spoiler there. The title <laughs> of which is The Blood of Olympus. Hey, hey there's hey, blood somewhere. It. This is going super well already. <laughs> um, yeah, this is the fifth and final book in the Heroes of Olympus series, which marks the second... I don't know, Riordanverse series that we yeah. have completed, which feels kind of wild. We've been in the Riordan world for, for long, a hot minute long now. Long time, yeah. yeah. It's a lot of books. Yeah, 10 books so far, plus, uh, what was it, the Demigod Files, the Demigod mm -hmm. Diaries? I mm -hmm. forget which one. We read one of those. I don't know why I keep thinking there's six in both of these series. There sure isn't. I've fully autocorrected yeah. that in my head. Yeah, there's... Well, I mean, actually, before, I believe in the last one, you thought that the, the, the House of Hades was the last book in the series, both when we recorded the video yeah. and then and I also thought again it was thought that book. in the... I read a lot of books. I don't remember how many okay, I read. Okay, great. All right. <laughs> also, like, I'm terrible at titles of books, especially when they're in a series. If yeah, they're in a series, I can't really, de like, delineate between titles. I I'm, always I'm not, forget. I'm not great at that either. Anyhow, um, Blood of Olympus. Blood of Olympus. How did you feel about this book? I feel excited and meh at the same time. Yeah, I had a somewhat similar experience. I was a bit disappointed by this book. I really didn't remember anything that happened in it. So it was nice, kind of like rereading it for the first time. But I just, the first like two thirds of this book, mm -hmm. I didn't really like. Yeah, well, I feel like we talked about it felt very much like the old like Percy Jackson vibes mm -hmm. of like a little question, a little question, a silly question, a silly quest, which is kind of jarring after the last one because the last You're one was so, so focused yeah. and serious. I kind of feel like the last one felt like the last book. Y yes. Um, the, what is it called? What was the last one called? The House of Hades? House of Hades. Yeah. Know. I felt like the House of Hades felt like a finale to me. Me too. And yes. it's specifically not necessarily what happened, but... The, the way the book was yeah, written. Yeah, the way the book was written, the, the emotional stakes. depth, the stakes, yeah. the the journeys that we had with the characters were so cared for and specific. And I felt like this felt not as much that. <laughs> no, I agree. I agree. I, I think that the first, the ending of this book, I really liked. I, mm -hmm. I mean, I had some problems with it, but that, that we'll get into later, but... Overall, I liked everything that happened. I yeah. liked the way most of the storylines wrapped up. I liked the way that, you know, there was some foreshadowing of what's going to happen next, since I know what the next series chronologically is, I think. But the early parts of this book were just so random and counter -y or side quest e. It just felt like a very big step back into yeah, the regular. Yeah, it was interesting. And, and it was also kind of... I had less patience for that than I normally do. Sure. Because there's so, there was so much happening in this book and so much needed to happen and yeah. it felt like that wasn't the best way for a lot of it to be explored there were a ton of plot lines to wrap up um and even some newish ones that were introduced yes. as well that felt slightly unnecessary not that i didn't like it but felt like a weird spot for them to be yes introduced. i, I agree. mean should we that, just that go was tough i think we, i think so yeah so yeah. <laughs> spoilers going forward we're, we're verging on very specific things yeah, now so sorry. we are going to start doing spoilers so if you haven't read this book yet pause we'll be here to talk about it when you're done but um yeah i think that's enough time so the nico reina hedge storyline i finally ended up landing on the fact that i think i think the storyline is good yeah and i do like it I would have liked it way more Correct. in another book. In the, I, I like actively before. dislike it in this book because, because I this feel is, like it takes away from the plot. I agree. And this is our first, I feel like we've gotten at least one Nico POV. We've gotten this. a little bit, I think, but, but not But I a don't lot. think we've ever gotten a Reina no, POV. No, 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 no. And so for me to get the point of view chapters from Reina's perspective in the last book felt so, I felt so empty with it. Like I liked it. I really liked the character. I love what they did with her relationship with Nico, but it felt very rushed and very odd to have in the last, the final book. Yeah. Of and it, it kept taking us away from the main plot, which was the giants, which, and I, and, and going really focusing on like the secondary plot, which is the camps yeah. and the Roman attack on Camp Half-Blood, which is a plot line that I really was interested in, mm -hmm. but they only actually got there and had anything like a lot to do with it at like the very end and like sure. the last quarter of the book. And that part I really loved, yeah. but Everything before that, I was very much like, there were certain moments, like, I, I liked learning about Raina's story, and I liked Same. getting in Nico's head and getting to see, like, Nico. the pain that he is in and see, 
you know, how he thinks and, and it really explains his character and why he's so alone all the time. But it just feels like it should have been in any of the other books. I yeah. also feel like this is kind of a sidestep, but there were some comments made about like Piper and Reyna. And it had been so long since we'd been at Camp Jupiter at all yeah. that it took me a long time. I was like, why don't they like each other? I was like, oh, because of a boy? Because of Jason, yes. Oh my God, no. And like we barely even touched that because we didn't get in Reyna's POV Until, back then. Yeah. So I was like, I have no emotional stakes. So you're trying to tell me that this was a high t- stake situation between these women? Mm, I don't believe it. Because it was I just... I thought that was more of just like a random side note. I didn't it think was, that was a side note. To but I, it took me thing. a while because it mentioned it a few times of them like becoming besties and how that was weird. And I was like, why is that weird? And I was like, oh, oh, weird. weird. Again, why I feel like I, I could have used that before because then maybe I could have gotten with the stakes of it a little bit. Whereas like it was just kind of thrown in the back burner earlier on that yeah. Raina felt like she was never really chosen. And that's sad mm-hmm. and terrible and sucks. But I would have enjoyed being on that journey with her for longer rather than like having it slapped in at the end yeah it's also tough to like i i liked this like by the end i was like okay in the beginning i was actively very annoyed <laughs> by any nico you, or reina no. chapter because i was just like I, what are we doing why, why is this happening nico now? i understand more because well, he's a character we've known for a long time and so much of the plot hinges on him mm-hmm. and his powers and his his journey his emotional journey and so i i understand the nico more than i do the reina I honestly think if we, I think it would have been better if this plot line was somehow put in House of Hades, but if we were forced to have sure. this in this book, I honestly almost would have rather everything with Orion, everything with Reyna's backstory, everything with Nico is just cut, and then we start getting Reyna and or Nico chapters at the very end of the book during the Battle for Camp Half-Blood as like a big jarring cut mm. from the... Interesting. From, yeah. Or... or we don't get any rain in the chapter Watch chapters. Out. I love a novella. You know how I feel about this. <laughs> I know. So that could be cool like, too. The the fact that their whole side quest was kind of well, a novella. Its th- own their novella. whole well, and very important. My other thing also is, and this sucks to say, their entire side quest could have been explained in a paragraph of text yeah. that they impart to Jason or Percy or whoever shows up well, we at the camps. Some, you're so right. But we like, did get some good moments, which like is not we, no, and that's the and thing. Her is like, sister going yeah. back home, getting her backstory. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. Could you know like we find out her powers and yes. how like that makes her bond with Nico cuz she's felt his pain very cool very deep yeah I but just, again felt kind yeah. of took me a while to get on board with it me too it's going to be a very long time to get on board with it there's literally a note in my note taking app where I'm like okay I've decided I like this storyline <laughs> I think it's well done because a lot of my earlier notes on it were very annoyed <laughs> and I will not read <laughs> those so which is it was just like why are we doing this I hate this and I was like oh Talia cool I yeah. guess hey girl um but I, I I I do like the storyline, but I think structure-wise, the book, and I, I hate saying, like, let's take away character development and stuff, but structure-wise, for the last book of the yeah, series, I think it honestly would have been stronger if it wasn't included or if it was only at the very end or, or something. I just, we didn't need as much of it as we got. And it also, I think, made the main plot line with our seven main heroes suffer because mm-hmm. there are some cool moments in this book. Mm-hmm. None, there's no like full scale large battle scene that lasts more than like three pages. No. And I was like, what? Well, and it was also Why? interesting too. You're right with the last, with the seven in this last book, we get no zero, zero. We get zero Hazel and Frank. Yeah. Bummer. We get no POV and, from two and, or, of them. Or Percy or Annabeth, which is kind of fine because we've gotten so much of them before. And I'm yeah. Okay and we know their vibes yeah. enough. I didn't notice that as much, but, but I guess then also there is, that this is not really Percy's series. It's this not. Is more... Which I actually, that is one thing I actually did like. Mm-hmm. Is that it's it's not Jason's series, but they kind of <laughs> tried to make it Jason's well, I, series. Well, it's not the and ending, like, how the, the ending ended with the three with of them. With the three of them. I, yeah. I, I wrote that down as well. I, I really liked, liked that. that. I was like, this is their story. Yeah, this feels and it's very kind of not like because Harry there's, Potter there's so many of them. Three. But I'm really, ex- I'm really happy. Anyway, we're skipping all Yeah, so sorry. Let's start again. Um, I had to rant about so it. So is there anything else you want to say about the Nico? I think we kind of covered our feelings on the Nico Reyna. Hedge, no, I, I, yeah. I, oh, I liked Hedge. I did. Oh, I always, yeah. I always like Hedge. Hedge Daddy. He, so cute. Daddy Hedge is very cute. I liked that. He's so proud. Yeah, he's, yeah. I, I'm I, glad I we get him reunited. And I also, I didn't mention this in House of Hades when it was revealed, but I, I want to say it now. Of course he's the one who brought Clarice into, um, 
Camp Half Blood. Of course, he was her guardian mm-hmm. when she was a kid. I was like, yeah, that that's because he's tracks. a maniac. Because he's a maniac. <laughs> <laughs> um, and her being like really pro- overprotective of his baby, I thought it was a cute moment. Very Just sweet. was like, yeah. this is great to have her name pop up and then be like, no, oh, I agree. Cute. I thought that was nice. Um, no, I like. I agree with everything you said. I loved the storyline. I loved these characters. I loved the depth and the growth we got from them. I just didn't love it in this novel. Yeah, no, I agree. And, and there, I guess we should also talk about a little bit about just the end, since we're going to cover their plot line. Yeah, their their part in the final battle. I really like the conflict between Camp Jupiter and Camp Half Blood. I like Octavian a lot as a character. I think it's interesting to have a character like that in a he's the worst. because he's the worst. Um and. I thought his death was extremely dark. Brutal, yeah. I was really like, well, Whoa. and to be in Nico's head for it, may and also he's like... his self loathing for yeah. allowing it to happen, I thought was very interesting. Also, the Mike Kahale character or whatever, I went, why? <laughs> yeah. Just why? Like we don't need it. It was a similar vibes to like the why is this Ethan Nakamura? Why now? Yeah, 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 why now? Um, but anyway, um, I there were so there, there were some really cool moments like. <laughs> Talia and the Amazons fighting Orion and then also like a lot of them being brutally murdered. I was like, whoa, okay. Um, Yeah, there there were really great moments and I did like what happened of the fight at the end. Mm -hmm. But again, I just think that it was too rushed. It was too fast. Like we spent so much time with, with them going to random places and being randomly pulled places by this statue and Nico like falling apart. Yeah. And then we get to this final climactic battle that lasts like less than a chapter. Yeah. And I was I was pretty disappointed by that. But I liked like the function Octavian served. I liked mm-hmm. his death, even though it was extremely dark. Yeah. And I thought it was I liked Will Solace and Nico's relationship, but I thought it was really funny because it just was so much out of nowhere mm-hmm. so fast yeah <laughs> like and it was like it was you're really just like you're just coming to the you're with me now with and me. Like, okay oh. um i was, which like, I was just oh. like i was okay. like oh cute when, when it first started and when will's like hey it's you and i was like oh this is adorable and then i was like we're in whoa we're, let's we're go in. baby okay yeah great um, i absolutely loved Nico going up to Percy at the end and being like, yes. thought you were cute. Man, you're fine now. You. Yeah, I don't <laughs> He's like, what? And Annabeth what? is like, Annabeth what? literally, they high five, I think, at one point. Yeah, Annabeth which and, I was and Nico just high five, so I think. Cute. Yeah, which is really funny. Because he's like, yeah, 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 cool. I, and I, I, I think that was a, a beautiful moment of growth for Nico, too, of like, first of all, admitting that in general, not only that he is gay, but also that he loves Percy. Yes. And he was attracted to Percy and just so casual, just throwing it out there. So cute. And also him being like, you're not that great. So yeah. bye. Not, not that into you anymore. I <laughs> have this like, it was blonde, so great. blonde healer boy. I thought, and Percy just like, bah, bah, bah. What? and what? and what? I just thought that was a really cute moment. It, yeah. was, it was very sweet. It was very like, good for you, Nico, for taking mm-hmm. the power mm-hmm. into your own hands and taking Percy down a bit. He's fine. Yeah, he's he's <laughs> fine. He's way fine. Anywho. Um, yeah, okay. So that's really all I have to say on, on that. On yeah. That so we can move on to the, our, the seven heroes who answered the call. Um, and I mean, I guess we can talk really quickly about Frank and Hazel, who. How dare they? I mean, they, they got done dirty in this book by not having any POVs, but <sighs> I mean, their plot lines were essentially yeah. unknown to the reader completed in the they last book. They both like leveled up to the top level yes, in the last they, book. And then like, their, so their like, problems okay. were gone, essentially. And like they. They're super powerful. I, now. I liked what they did with them in this book, but they didn't really do. Mm hmm anything yeah and they had both they each had cool moments where they like transformed or used magic and beat a bunch of people but yeah i was a little sad because i specifically love frank so much and i know you love hazel i do um yeah so that was a bit of a bummer but i mean at least it's not like they had no closure and frank frank fully comes into his own as the praetor right and he's absolutely going to camp jupiter uh hazel and nico have like a moment Mm -hmm. and just really sweet living in the hades cabin together for a minute i thought that was really nice but yeah it was it was a bummer i would have liked more from them yeah but anywho everybody anywho. else was great everybody else <laughs> yeah, was also great for the most part yeah i mean so we never we did we didn't get any annabeth and percy either which would have been interesting since they both i did like that there were like at least a few moments where they kind of focused on the fact that they both like certainly have ptsd mm-hmm. yeah from, they, from couldn't, being talk about they couldn't they could talk yeah. about it and there's like vague um references they make to it which i really i really enjoyed that they did that mm. um 
I thought it was really funny how broy Jason and Percy were in this book. Jason is just broy in general. I loved the fact that and we're kind of skipping to Jason for just a second. I did love the fact that Jason was like painted as like the bro ally. Yeah. So hard he in is. this like and the way even Nico thinks of him is like my friend Jason. Essentially my friend straight friend Jason who I came out to. And yeah. I was like that's cute. And he's like cool bro. Um, and he's like yeah man. And also Hold with his bro. little glasses. Yeah. <laughs> um, I feel like we got some really uh, specific imagery of him in this book, we did which was good. we did uh but annabeth and percy i'm trying to think if there's anything specific that i really really wanted to talk about hold on yeah it very much felt kind of like the passing of the torch in a way uh, yeah i mean like like you said it is kind of like the passing of the torch and i did really like that and that was a part of the plot is mm-hmm. like percy having like annabeth doesn't have this problem as much but percy having to be like let let go and let someone else do yes. it and like i like that i like bro. that that they made that an aspect of the plot and not I just too. like i a... was even thinking of the moment when he um goes down into the ocean with the the demigod or not even the demigod what's her name kim they call her kim yes. who's starting the storm mm-hmm. he very much is like jason come on and yeah. it's very and you see that like that was kind of the first moment that i was like mm. okay this is what's happening this yeah, is, yeah, yeah this is sweet yeah um, I, um, yeah. yeah, I really liked the very end when Percy's like, wait, 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 we can all go up and fight Guy together. And Jason's like, no, man, we're good. We got this. We got this. Yeah. Um, I, I do really like that, that him and Annabeth kind of have their, like, they, like, <laughs> in the imagery in my head, because he's like, we're going to go to college in yeah. New Rome. And it was very much of, like, they're like the elves going to the, like, immortal land yes, kind exactly. of vibe like, to me. You will never see us again. Exactly. <laughs> they're like, we're just, we're too, PTSD, talk about PTSD. We're done. We're so tired, and we're just going to go live a quiet, normal life, mm-hmm. never bother us again yes. type of a vibe. And I was like, oh, okay, cute. Mm-hmm. Like, I love that for them. They need to have that. I yes. hope they have that. Yes. <laughs> um, and then we have Piper... Leo and Jason are three from the first book. Yeah. Who end up this book, and I think both, and all, three, well both, all time, three yes. get, you know, their moments in this. And I think their their storylines are, for the most part, wrapped up pretty well. I, I The only issue I had with any of them in this book is I, f- I feel like we already never really super knew what to do with Piper. Mm. And the way that he wrote some of her chapters in this book in the beginning specifically really annoyed me <laughs> because there were a lot of things of, like, Piper did this, and she's super strong. There was a lot of in this book, not just with her, but with other people being like, we went through the monsters and fought them all, and they all died. Mm. And, and like telling instead of showing, which is not something that I feel like happens too much in these books, but it, I noticed it multiple times with Piper. Like Piper coming, like the, in the early chapters of the book, people were like, Piper beat, I think it was like a flock of harpies alone. She's mm. really strong now. She's like, she's, she's been working with that sword a lot and now mm-hmm. she can fight really well. Oh, I see what you're saying. And then there's one okay. later where she's like, well, I had that conversation with my mom last night and this is what she said. And I went, well, I would have liked to have seen a, a conversation with really Aphrodite I thought I and skipped a mom. chapter. No, no. <laughs> and that chapter. happened multiple times with her throughout the thing. I see what I you're saying like, now, yeah. Wh- why are we doing this? But then this? we also got a lot of her power play in general. Like we the did. snake song and... Yes. Um, that was really cool and how powerful powerful her charm speak has gotten. Mm-hmm. So I think we did see a lot we of did. it. But there was you're right, there were a few there was references just, there, in there, there were, I was like, yeah. Hey, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> but um but I did I did like all of their storylines in this. Obviously Leo's, because I think Leo, Leo is most. probably my favorite of those it. of that crew. Um I really liked Jason Jason's arc in this entire series. It mm-hmm. feels like in the middle he kinda got dropped off and yeah. it's just like He's just like kind of the straight guy and Riordan had to try and figure out like, so what can I do that's interesting for him? Right. And Where's it, the growth? Yeah. And it eventually turning into like him feeling lost and then mm-hmm. finding his place in between both worlds and wanting to become the Pontifus Maximus or whatever well, it's called, it, which I was like, yeah, yeah I like this. And this I feel works. like his character specifically in this book, is, you know, like it, he does have that. I feel like as a reader too, you're kind of like, okay, what is this guy like where where is his drive where is he going and, and he, he kind of ends either. up being middle like he's he's definitely just like he's not necessarily the driving force hero he just really wants good yeah. and i think kind of keeps himself in that well and i think that's the thing spot. that works and he it's even like he even inner monologues about it a little bit in this book is like he's a son of jupiter he's also like blonde haired blue eyed hot jock like he's coded in literature to be the hero right and to have power. And he talks about how, like, being a son of Jupiter, he's like, I went into the Legion and joined the worst cohort and, like, did all this stuff because I didn't want people to... He, he was given power because people expected it of him and he didn't want it. Yeah. Um, and so it's interesting seeing him yeah, find his... Pay, he's like, but I don't know what else to do because this is what everyone this else is, is telling me what, what I'm supposed to be yeah. doing. But I don't, I don't want it. I'm not interested in it. 
Um, and him meeting Zeus slash Jupiter, that entire thing was, was kind of interesting. I did like, I did, um, <laughs> I did like Zeus volleyball spiking their, the Argo that 2 was across the world, which is so dumb. crazy visual. Absolutely crazy visual. And I liked that we got Jason being cool in combat, like, one last time with him and Zeus fighting whatever giant it was mm-hmm, they were fighting. I don't mm-hmm. know. But that scene, while very cool, and while we got a moment for everyone to shout out, like, with them fighting with their right. godly parent, like, Frank and Ares, and I really liked Piper and Aphrodite, because Aphrodite's just being like, yes, good She's job! Like, oh, how beautiful! Love <laughs> yeah, this for you! I thought that was really, really funny. Love a defeat! But again, <laughs> the only one of them who got any sort of, like, drawn out thing and by drawn out thing i mean like maybe a page is jason fighting with zeus and while that's great mm-hmm. we've been building up to this for an entire five book series and you can't give me more than like a third of a chapter on it i just thought it was so, i was like i i feel like the structure of this book you did too much work to try and make everything fit and then didn't leave any moments for the actual climax sure. i liked yeah. everything that happened but i i wanted more of it i felt a little bit let down yeah I don't know. Yeah. You, yeah. No, I don't disagree. I think, and I think when you, I think and I think a thing, especially when you think back to like the Battle of Manhattan. That's what I'm saying. Which was spread S- out, yeah, but very, not too much no. at all. Um, I think you're right. It's it seemed a bit anticlimactic. Yeah. Because I I also think having the battles be split of having the one in Rome, Greece. Rome, I think they were at the Parthenon. At the Parthenon, having the battle with the giants at the Parthenon, and then having the other battle be starting at the same time the while ex- at, yeah at the camps while like you know anxiety driving that is it does also split you as the reader too and yeah i would like to kind of give all my attention to one yeah as well yeah. i i will also say especially because they happen back to back yeah and so tiny yeah and yeah both of them are so small really small chapters. yeah yeah anyway Anywho. um i i will also say and this is just really like a me specific thing but specific with the percy jackson series it felt very much like not only is it like this whole other world but like i can see the effects it's having on the real world too and the battle of manhattan felt very well i mean we've lived in manhattan so that's kind of yeah. a different thing but also like they talked sure. about like pedestrians and other people and sally and I forget the name Paul? of Percy stepped at Paul, I think, um, like there and in danger. Mm-hmm. And so you have this connection to the mortal world and to the real world. And it feels more like it's actually happening in our world. Sure. This series had basically none of that. No. That I really noticed. Like we had Besides, nothing tied to Besides like the sidewalk cafes that. and Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but like in this book, they didn't even really talk. Like they're not like, there's screaming no. pedestrians running away. They're just like, okay. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, which I thought was... Not something that's vital, but I did notice it missing. It's just like a, a layer of immersion that I missed a sure. little bit. Sure, yeah, I don't um, disagree. But, um... Should we talk about our boy Leo? We should talk about Leo. I love Leo. I knew it. I knew, I knew he was going to get Calypso. We knew, knew he was, was going to get, get his girl. It was great. It's great last just, chapter. And I'm... Fantastic ha- last truly chapter. Truly because I was reading it to be like, when are we getting... When is he going to... I know he's going to mm-hmm. find her. Yeah, because Leo is a true man. And... Yes. I Little loved romantic. the revival of Festus, getting yeah. Festus back as a dragon, and then the three of them flying up, and like um, Leo, like thanks to the slap from Zeus, thanks to the slap from <laughs> Zeus, and Leo just like fireballing yeah. Gaia, which was great. I, I like. I mean, I loved that it was all three of them. Yeah, his whole storyline in this, and his acceptance and focus on trying to get Calypso back, and also acceptance of like the potential sacrifice to do it. Well, I and just... I feel like he had such a like young adult journey of you know, finding love in someone that, like, that was such a driving force for him. And it made him kind of just be like, cool, I got, you know, I'm, I'm, somebody loves me. Like, it was, you could see the, the confidence in Leo. the ladies love Leo. You could see, or read, the confidence in the, his character, mm-hmm. you know, of just like, yeah, I got this. Like, yes. I've got to do this. this. is the thing I'm going to do. Duh. Of course. And I think that's such a lovely, you know, kind of real life example of like, you know, if someone believes in you, you can do anything. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've i always liked Leo in this series because I think he has the most defined voice of any of the characters other than Percy, really. Um, yeah. And Percy only because Jordan had five books to practice writing him before this. Leo is the most unique of the characters and has the most unique voice, mm-hmm. I think. And I'm sure that some people probably hate him because humor <laughs> sure. is subjective. And if you don't like his humor, then it's you're nice. probably not going to enjoy reading his POV. Yeah, sure. But... I 
I liked everything he did in this series, and I'm glad that we ended with him. I'm glad he got a complete arc. I am too. And got to, and I, I'm glad at how like competent he became. It's exactly. not that he was incompetent before, but just like so confident in his own abilities, um, so able to. He, he's the one who facilitated anything happening since he made the ship, since he revived Festus in his full form, mm -hmm. and he made whatever the, the Valdesinator for Apollo. Yeah, got that Where it's so stupid, but very so funny. So good. But I love that throughout, especially in this book, after the last book, you see Leo kind of gain a little bit of a different sort of confidence, but mm -hmm. he still keeps his humor. Yeah. And like you said, I think he has such a defined personality, but still had, there's growth there, and that, I loved that. I thought it was very well done. Yeah, yeah. I liked him a lot. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, the end of that plot line is obviously them all fighting the gods and uh, the, the the giants with the gods. And I liked everyone, like everyone got a moment and I liked how, you know, the they had a plan to get in there. Of course, it fell apart. Yeah. People jumped in and they're fighting Worked and then everything well. fails and the gods come in and save them. But again, I just thought it, was too, I thought it was just too short. Yeah, I thought it was short. I was like, this is it. They're fighting with their godly parents. This is and what I we've think been waiting for the whole time. Yeah, that was awesome. And then similarly with the, the battle in Long Island as well with Gaia. We've we've had sh Gaia being the big bad for so long. Mm -hmm. And I thought the way that they defeated her was really, really cool, really cool yeah. and really, really smart. And I did but like how happened. that was seeded throughout throughout the book. Yeah. And, and Leo like came up with the idea of mm -hmm. like, we need to get her in the air away from her source of power. Very smart. And, uh, and like you could figure it out. And all stuff. Yeah. But it was, yeah, it was interesting. I think I expected more battle lead up mm -hmm. to that. But the way it happened, I thought was it was really cool and putting her to sleep essentially and yes i thought that was um very smart and uh, honestly i didn't see it coming so very yeah. unexpected to me okay. and i did love that it, the the people to defeat her were the three that started the series it's all very i thought that was very nice having piper jason and leo tag team with the vibes of like oh we just know how to work together so well we're mm -hmm. such a well-oiled machine and i thought that was Lovely. There, I, I want to make a few shout outs to just like seeing old names on the battle for Long Island. That was that I really, really enjoyed. Like I literally wrote in my notes, nothing, but I'm just beaming that Tyson showed up. I, I know. was so happy. And uh, what's the harpy's name? He's girly. Ella. Just, yeah. Ella being like, my boyfriend is stronger yeah. than moments. <laughs> I was like, wow, you're Ella adorable. Goes. Um you know, mentioning a lot of, a lot of mentions of Rachel Dare, even though she didn't really, I don't think she was actually in the book, but because the Oracle of Delphi, bit of her but I did also like how scene. that is them. Well, that is them. That is the author clearly setting up the trials of Apollo, which is the next, I think the next series. Cute. And there is also a reference. If you caught it to Annabeth at one point saying like, someone asks her about her family mm -hmm. and she's like, Oh, I have like an uncle and a cousin in Boston. Uh, my uncle doesn't talk to my dad. Yes. Some sort of irreconcilable differences. That's I reference watched. to Magnus Chase and the gods of Asgard, okay, which cool, is another series. I was like, why are we talking like, about this, this the, like the weird, intense family drama? <laughs> the, the, the main character of God. that is, is Annabeth's cousin, Magnus. That's cute. I didn't know that. I did, of I did Thor, think, are we going to handle this at some point? <laughs> if you want to read Magnus Chase and the gods of Asgard, then it's kind of handled. I think Annabeth actually pops up in maybe the first book. Great. I don't remember. I, I read it a very long time ago. We'll see. But, um... Yeah, I really liked seeing those legacy characters. Clarice, again, popping up. We got a mention of Grover in the fight, uh -huh. which was kind of cool. Yeah, it was... But again, again, I'm just like, oh, I want more. I want some more of this. Yeah. Um, but, you know. Anyway, that's really... I, I don't know. Do you have anything else? I don't really have anything else. Yeah. Go team, strong, go Leo. Strong ending. <laughs> weak. More than first half, yeah. I would say. Not my favorite. Unfortunately. But I did like the ending. I did I really like characters. the ending. And so it's it's nice to, even if I didn't love, I don't know how I would rank these books, but this would either be my least favorite or my second to least favorite. Yeah. Um, but at least it ended on, on a note in which I can be like, I'm happy with how this ended. Yeah, and I feel sure. quite uplifted I about the characters and I like how their storylines wrapped up. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, speaking of how, what would you like to rate this out of? I mean, I guess we could do like Mother Nature's that feels appropriate. Val dozen eaters. <laughs> dozen. I don't um, even know what that would be. Parthenons um, would be appropriate. You could do giants, but I don't know how I would. Giant, I would be yeah. like, it's a giant. I could do. You could do Mother Earths. 
I suppose. I mean, I would say Gaia. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find a, a thing for that. I was just like, maybe Gaia's... we'll just do Earth. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. Because we'll she some, is do Earth. some sort of thing. She is. She yeah. is the Earth. Yeah. Um. So how many Mother Earths would you give this out of five? I'll give this three and a half Mother Earths out of five. Yeah. Guys. What about you? I would give this a three out of five Mother Not Earths. I think half. that the structure problems in the beginning are pretty rough the end really got me i think the, the end the end, got, same with you. the end the end got me pumped up but um that's fair that's cool yeah and i mean and i love a last book in a series and i was being like oh i'll give it a four and i'm like you Maybe really you didn't, didn't like, like the beginning <laughs> parts of this book so that's you why rating really, is so hard um I, and it's just like it's yeah it's tough and it's yeah. a shame that that the last book kind of feels that way i never like that you never want no. to end a series on that but but again the ending the actual ending of the book is very good i just don't really Except like the way that he chose to structure it yeah um but otherwise yeah that's it that's the that's end it. of our uh journey with the heroes of olympus well the heroes i know they're so heroic I, yeah i like them yeah we my, don't know what we're gonna buddies. read next but this was a really fun journey spending so much time in the reordin verse i i do love these books they are they are very nostalgic, at least specifically the Percy, the original sure. Percy Jackson series. But these ones as well, they remind me of a, a younger yeah. time. I once again wish I would have read them as a young person because I, I loved them. Yeah, I, I, I don't think that they were coming out when I was like specifically the right age, age group yeah. they're supposed to sure. be. But I would have been obsessed mm -hmm. with them. I can only imagine at that age. Oh, God. absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, so uh, let us know what you think of this last book. Hopefully you liked it a little bit le better than we Had did. More fun. Uh, yeah, let us know what your favorite and least favorite book in this series was. But thank you for watching our videos. If you've watched all of our videos on the Heroes of Olympus, I'm sure we'll have some other fun YA or middle grade mm -hmm. series up next. We're not sure yet, but uh, like, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff. Otherwise, thank you all so much for watching and... We'll see you on our next adventure.